It is October. Welcome to our monthly market update here in the Seattle area. I want to dive in with the MLS latest release statistics so you can see exactly what's happening to your property value and home sales data for the last month, the month of September. So as you can see here on our graph, we have King County, Snohomish County, Seattle, and Bellevue as our representative areas. And if you look here at this box on the side, you'll see that we are up pretty strongly year over year in King County, Seattle, and Bellevue, but we are down 14% from Snohomish County last year, year over year. So as you can see right now, right here, median home prices in Snohomish County are $820,000. Last year at this time, they were $955,000. So kind of a peak last year, things were riding pretty high for them. Uh, it seems like I would guess that if we smooth out this data, let's take a look at kind of the rolling six month trend. Things are a little bit flatter. We're only down 8% year over year. And this to me just looks like a softening of that ex burbs market. People are not having to go out as far into the countryside to get affordability because we have lower interest rates now and also more people are interested in being at work. Uh, Amazon and other employers are requiring more presence at work these days. So the idea of living far out in the country, getting a big house that's cheaper is not as appealing when you're going to be having to do an hour and a half commute every day to get into the office. So that's my hypothesis on that. But I also think that this line is pretty bouncy. As you can see here in June, uh, we were up in the 900s. So I don't think that that's much more than kind of seasonal variation. It doesn't seem like it's a, a flat line or a, a strong trend there. Conversely, you can see that Seattle, which is the red line, has gone up and held steady this year with, again, more people coming back to the office. Seattle is up 11.5% and average home prices there are 870000 including both condos and single family homes. If we look at just condos, let's go to Seattle and look at just condos. That's giving us an average price point of 604. And if we look at just residential, that gives us an average price point of 941. So you can see, depending on whether you're going for a condo or a townhouse type of property versus a single family home, where those median price levels fall. Now let's take a look at new listings and how we're doing on volume. This is people who are wanting to sell their homes and it's bouncing up from a low point there in August going up in September. This is very typical. Usually September and October are stronger months for home sales. It's kind of our second spring when we see a lot of activity after the summer lull. And then as we get into Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, it's kind of flat, you know, it's dark. It's the holidays, people are staying at home. That's not when they choose to move. But by Jingo, come, I usually say the Super Bowl. Sometimes I say Valentine's Day, but I have seen it starting earlier and earlier after the new year. The buyers start to come out, you know, new year, new house. They've made a resolution to get a new house. And so they are out shopping pretty early in the year usually predating the new housing inventory, which starts to be listed, I would say, mid-February and after. So if you're trying to get a good deal on a house, that's a good time to be shopping, but know that there won't be as much selection. It tends to be more, I would say, lower quality homes, estate sale homes and properties that aren't, you know, the spectacular ones where people have the ability to wait until their rhododendrons are blooming or their dogwoods or whatever makes their yard look great. They usually wait until a little bit more of the April time frame to put those types of houses on the market. So if you are looking for really premium, nice estate style property, I would be looking to buy or sell between March and May if you have that much discretion and control. Otherwise, there are great properties coming along all the time, but maybe the, uh, the fanciest, best ones are going to be fewer and farther between. Also know that in those spring months, you're going to pay a premium for that product. You're going to have more buyer competition. Chances are higher that the price will escalate. So if you're looking for a good deal, you know, going against the grain and looking for property in this darker season, the lower selection season is actually a great idea. 
And for sellers, you're going to have a lot less competition. So if you do have a nice, beautiful home, the buyers who are out then are very serious and there are typically not as many great homes of that quality for them to look at. Looking at closings, this is a little bit more of a delayed metric. So we are still seeing a decline in closings typical throughout the summer months. And remember that if uh, somebody went under contract in August, those are the closings that we're going to see in September. Like I said before, we see more people going under contract in September and October. So I would look to next month's data to reflect how strong this fall bump is in terms of closings. But of course, like we saw before, we are seeing more homes going up for sale, which would indicate that we're going to have more closings to follow. And finally, I like to look at days on market because I feel like it's a great indicator of what is happening kind of at the moment with how quickly the inventory is being turned. And as you can see right here, we have between one and two weeks as our median time that it takes a home to sell. Still very, very fast. Uh, compared to the rest of the country, Seattle is one of the fastest moving real estate markets nationwide. 14 days is a little slower for us than what we've seen in other times of the year, you can see. But again, you know, that summer activity just doesn't tend to be as strong. Um, a lot of buyers were waiting to see what would happen with the latest Fed rate cuts, but the truth is not much helpful happened. <laughs> the good news is that the interest rates have been coming down and down and down for the last six months. Now they're in the low sixes. They could drop below 6% in the next six months, but you know, we have to see what that does as far as pricing. Oftentimes when affordability improves on the interest rate side, it unimproves and it gets worse on the pricing side. So they stay balanced because we just have always, it seems, more buyers than sellers in the market. But this is a great sign that a lot of property is still selling quickly. It's still a strong seller's market, but buyers may have a little bit more breathing room to make an offer. Not everything is going under contract in 30 days. Shows to pending here tells us the ratio of how many times a house would be shown before it went under contract. It's about 10. In Bellevue, it's 20. Why do you think that is? Think about it. Bellevue is one of our very hottest markets. Uh, the things are selling very quickly there. Look at the days on market. And Bellevue is seven rather than two weeks. So because Bellevue is so popular, they're going to have it on the market for a week. They're going to have more people coming to look at each and every home. So in that week that it's on the market, they're getting twice as many people to come out and see it. In Seattle, we're showing that property over the course of two weeks and we're having half as many people come to see it, 10 people versus 20 people. So the idea here is that it's just more, more buyers out looking to buy in Bellevue that's keeping their price high, that's keeping the uh, market going up and up in that area. But in Seattle, again, there's more breathing room and sellers can expect that once they've had about 10 people through their property, they should have had an offer. If you've had 10 people through your property and no offer, it's time to think about why that is. Does something at the property need to change? Uh, something with the presentation or the pricing? If you have not even been able to get 10 people through your property and it's been on the market for one to two weeks, then that's kind of a big red flag that the listing online is not attracting people to the home. So looking at even more severe, <laughs> um, you know, changing the photos, changing the interior layout, changing the pricing, uh, it's a big red flag if uh, you can't even get 10 people to come to the home in the first 10 days. So that's pretty much where we are. It's still a very strong sellers based market here, but it's improving for buyers. It's a good time of year to start bargain hunting buyers right now in the autumn. You have some selection uh, in the winter. You have less selection, but lower prices. And then in the spring, prepare for things to take off and have another price surge. As you can see, here's the spring. We actually didn't have, this is median home sale prices. In Snohomish, the market came down in the spring. In Seattle, the market came up. And in Bellevue, the market came way up in the spring. Last year, it was pretty flat, but made its way up in the spring, peaking in April and May. And even in June, it was high. In 2022, that was a crazy year. But that's typically our trend. Strong spring market, pretty strong autumn market and a little bit softer in summer and winter. So we're coming out of summer, we're having our brief autumn hit, 
and then we'll be going into winter again. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this gives you an idea of the dynamics that we're seeing in the market today. And if you have further questions or want me to zoom in and do some detail on your particular neighborhood, we can get down to smaller cities and zip codes. I'd be happy to do that for you. Take a look at condos versus residential, etc. So let me know what you need. I'm always here to help. It's Emily Cressy at homeproassociates.com with Keller Williams, Greater Seattle. And I will see you on the next video.